Hey everyone, Chase here with a video that I've been wanting to make for a long time. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the hardest badges to earn in Splatoon 3. Badges are, in my opinion, an amazing addition to the Splatoon series. Being able to put whichever ones you want on your splash tag lets players customize and express themselves in so many ways. However, there are some badges in this game that can be considered near impossible to obtain. Whether it takes thousands of hours of grinding, or requires you to be one of the top 10 players of your region, trying to 100% all the Splatoon 3 badges isn't really something that's possible, assuming you're playing legitimately of course. Other people have made similar videos about this topic in the past, but Nintendo recently added a few new badges in the recent chill season that can definitely fit this list, so I figured I'd give my own take on the subject. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, please like and consider consider subscribing to get the channel to 30,000. While every badge that I discuss in this video is extremely difficult to obtain, some are definitely harder than others. So we're going to start by going over the easier badges first, then work our way up. The final badge that we discuss will be what I considered the toughest badge in Splatoon 3. Now that you guys understand, let's get started. First up, we have a type of badge that I know everyone watching this is familiar with, the 5 star weapon badges. Yep, that's right, these are at the bottom. In a nutshell, this is a badge that you get for racking up a ton of wins on a certain weapon. And when I say a ton, I mean a ton. To be more specific, you need exactly 1,160,000 freshness points. And for comparison, a single knockout in a ranked mode gives you 2,500 freshness points. So uh, yeah, this takes a while. That's 464 Anarchy Battle wins, or 829 Turf War wins. At the time of recording, I have 6 5 star weapon badges, and each one has taken anywhere from 50 to 75 hours worth of using said weapon. Also do keep in mind that private battle wins don't count towards your freshness. As with the next few badges that we're going to talk about, this badge is hard purely because of the grinding aspect. You don't have to be quote unquote good at the game to get this badge, although winning more often will make the process faster. Next we have the golden special weapon badges. You thought the 5 star badges were grindy? Those require 464 anarchy battle wins. The golden special badges require 1200. The good news though is that unlike the 5 star badges, anarchy battles and turf wars aren't weighted differently. Winning in either mode counts as a single win for this badge. To make things worse though, private battle wins don't count, and neither do wins where you don't actually use your special. Therefore, there is no way to properly check how close you actually are to earning this badge. Yes, the NSO app does show how many wins you have with each weapon, but that includes private battle and non-special wins. So the number it's giving you is most likely inflated. I currently have 4 golden special badges at the time of recording, and each one has taken about 100 to 120 hours worth of using the special. I know that sounds insanely high, but remember, you're not going to win every single game. All of your losses are going to contribute to a ton of wasted time while going for this badge. Third on the list, we have the Table Turf Rank 999 badge. I don't even play Table Turf, but I know this badge is no easy feat. I'm aware that some people have been getting this badge by using a bot that auto plays against the computer. But again, this entire list is going off of the fact that you're playing the game legitimately. I didn't even have an idea regarding exactly how long this badge would take to get, but luckily, Frags made a video about it. I'll leave a link to that in the description. In this video, he says that earning this badge would take around 1000 hours of table turf, and that's assuming you're fighting a level 3 enemy every game and that you're also winning every game. In the little bit of table turf that I've played, I get tired of it after 15 minutes, so I cannot imagine playing this mode for 1000 hours. Next up, we have one of the new badges added in the 2023 chill season, the Win 250 Straight Anarchy Series badge. Now when you hear the term Win Straight Series, this sounds incredibly daunting, but I promise you, it's not as bad as it may seem. I don't know why the badge description is worded like this, because the term straight series is just straight up untrue. It makes it sound like you have to win 250 anarchy series in a row, while going 5-0 in each and every one of them. But in reality, you just have to win the series. Even if you go 5-2, that still counts, and they also don't have to be in a row. 
I know this because I got the bronze and silver version of this badge when I only had like a 2 series streak. I think it's probably just a translation error or something, but yeah, this badge description is very misleading. With that being said though, the badge certainly isn't easy. To be able to win 250 Anarchy series is going to take a very long time. That's 1250 wins. Remember, winning an entire series just counts as 1 out of 250. And let's say, for example, you win 4 games in a series, but then end up losing 3. Well, then that series isn't going to count towards your total. You just wasted like half an hour in regard to earning this badge. It's definitely not the hardest badge in the game, it is just Anarchy series, but winning 250 of them is going to take a good while. Directly following the series badge, we have the Win 350 Straight X Battles badge. Keep in mind that there are separate badges depending on which X Battle division you're in. Just like the series badge, this description is misleading. The wins do not have to be consecutive, and while it may seem like you only have to win individual games in X rank, it does indeed track how many X series you're winning. Going 3-2 is fine, but you must win the series, otherwise it will not count. Now if you do the math, this actually does amount to less overall wins than the Anarchy series badge, since an X series only requires 3 wins to complete. Therefore, it's 1050 wins, compared to the 1250 with Anarchy series. However, I'd argue that the X badge is still harder, because, well, one, it's X rank, the opponents are going to be much harder than Anarchy, and two, you have to be above 2000 X power for a series win to count towards this badge. While that may be easy for some people, it's certainly not for everyone. For those reasons, the X badge is harder to obtain in my opinion. Alright, so this brings us to the Salmon Run badges. If you guys know, I do play a bit of Salmon Run, I even overfish from time to time, but I'm by no means a pro. So I thought, rather than having me explain why these badges are so difficult, why not bring on an expert? I'm going to turn things over to my good friend Hydrocynic, who's a top overfisher, as well as a fellow content creator, to thoroughly explain these Salmon Run badges. Take it away, Hydro. Thanks, Chase. The Gold Boss Salmonid badges make a big part in terms of Salmon Run's badges in Splatoon 3. All regular Boss Salmonids have a badge for how many times you defeat them. You get a regular Boss Salmonid badge for defeating 100, a Silver badge for defeating 1000, but for the Gold badge, well, that increases tenfold, as you need to defeat 10,000 of a certain Boss Salmonid. From a survey I conducted, most Salmon Runners tend to earn their first Gold Boss badge at around 6 to 7,000 shifts. However, one Boss Salmonid badge is notably harder to obtain than the rest, simply because they only spawn half the time, that being the Big Shot. The Big Shot undergoes a 50-50 check before a wave begins, so while it's obviously good that they don't spawn all the time, it does make the badge for defeating 10,000 of them all the more difficult. Something else to put into perspective is that they don't spawn at all during high tide, nor do they spawn in any night waves outside of Fog or Kohawk Charge. For the next series of badges, the Gold King Salmonid badges are arguably more time intensive, as you need to defeat 1,000 of a certain King Salmonid in order to obtain its gold badge. To put into perspective, getting a Gold King badge would usually take about 8 to 11,000 shifts, which is very grindy and requires a lot of dedication. However, there is a strategy that teams with communication can do, called King Throwing, where they intentionally lose games to fill up the Salmometer, which spawns in a King Salmonid the more the meter is filled. This trick helps by getting King Salmonids more quickly than playing at full games, but defeating 1,000 of a certain King Salmonid is still a challenge that takes a large amount of time to do. For the last Salmon Run related badge, this is no doubt the hardest badge to obtain from the mode. To earn this badge tells me that you are a truly dedicated Salmon Runner who has spent thousands of hours playing the mode and clocked in tens of thousands of shifts. The hardest badge to get from Salmon Run in Splatoon 3 is the Gold Grisco Point Club badge. To put into perspective just how insane the badge is, let's take a quick step back. You unlock the bronze version at 10,000 Grisco points, and the silver version at 100,000 points, which I think is pretty fair. You would think that the gold version would take 1 million points, right? Nope. You need a whopping 9,999,999 Grisco points, which is the most ridiculous jump I've ever seen for such a badge. The gap between the bronze and silver variations is normal, but the gap between the silver and gold is a literal journey that requires unparalleled dedication. One of the first people ever to receive this badge was Manami, who achieved it in June of 2023. It took them over 20,000 shifts to earn the badge, 
and within that time frame, I can never imagine the sheer commitment that went into it. Well, this wraps it up for the Salmon Run badges. Now, I'm gonna hand things back over to Chase. Thanks, Hydro. As I mentioned earlier, Hydro is a content creator himself. If you're interested in Salmon Run at all, be sure to check out his channel as he posts top-level overfishing content as well as informative guides. The link will be in the description. The next badge on the list is the infamous level 999 badge. I think it's pretty obvious why this badge is so high on the list. Leveling up takes forever in this game, even with an experience ticket active. Oh, and get this, once you reach level 499, the amount of experience required to level up starts to increase. In fact, every 100 levels after this point, the experience required goes up by increments of 50,000. Except for level 899, because here it increases by 33,333, making it require 333,333 experience points for the final 100 levels. I think it's safe to say that if you're playing legitimately, this is the most time consuming badge in the entire game, taking around 9.5k hours. Second to last, we have the top 10 X rank badges. The recent chill season added a couple more to go along with the standard golden X badge. You'll get this one if you place in the top 10 for any mode in the Tent Attack division at the end of a season, and you'll get this one if you do the same for the Takaroka division. You'll also get the standard golden X badge regardless of your division. So, it's no secret that the Takaroka division is much harder to reach top 10 in compared to the Tent Attack division, since Takaroka is the JP region. It's much more competitive. For that reason, the Golden Takaroka X badge holds a lot more value compared to the Tent Attack one. Now, that's not to say that anyone can get the Golden Tent Attack badge, you still have to be a really good player. But when you look at the top X powers for both divisions, it's very evident that the Takaroka division is much more challenging. Only a maximum of 80 of these badges are handed out to players at the end of every season. So in order to obtain one, you have to be one of the elites. So that brings us to the final badge. What could possibly be harder than a badge that requires you to be a top 10 player? Well, let me tell you. In my opinion, the hardest badge to earn in Splatoon 3 is the Golden Shellout Machine Badge. This badge requires you to roll a golden or silver capsule from the shellout machine a whopping 16 times. In other words, you have to get the rare title and banner from every season. For starters, at the time of recording this video, this badge isn't even possible to get. There are only 12 possible jackpots you can obtain right now. So if you see someone with this badge on their splash tag, you know they're cheating. But even if we fast forward a few months to the point where there are 16 possible jackpots, this badge is still near impossible. A lot of people know that you have a 0.3% chance of rolling a silver capsule and a 0.1% chance of rolling a golden capsule. But what a lot of people don't know is that those odds are predetermined on your game the moment you create a save file. If you use Lean's website, you can actually find the seed for your shellout machine and find out when you'll roll one of these capsules. And while some people may have hit a couple jackpots in the past, other people have still yet to get a single golden capsule from the start of the game. And that includes me. I actually recently checked my seed, and my first golden capsule is still over a thousand rolls away. So, yay. Anyway, why do I think this is the hardest badge in the game when it's just all luck? Well, that's exactly why. It requires near perfect luck. Sure, some of the other badges are definitely hard, but if you just put in the time or get good enough, you can get all of those badges. But with this golden shellout badge, I don't care how much you play the game. If you don't have a near perfect shellout seed, you will not get this badge, ever. It could take hundreds of thousands of rolls for some people if they're unlucky. You have zero control over this badge. And that is why I believe that the Golden Shellout Machine is currently the hardest badge to obtain in Splatoon 3. Alright, we've reached the end. Those are what I believe to be the toughest badges in Splatoon 3. Many of these are hard purely because of the grind aspect, but other ones require you to have immense skill or luck in order to obtain them. I have a theory that in one of the next two seasons, Nintendo will introduce some factors that will make earning some of these badges a little bit easier. Like maybe they'll introduce a third tier of level up tickets that makes you gain experience points even faster. Or maybe something that can alter your seed for the shellout machine to have a better chance of hitting the jackpot. Either way though, to be able to get every single badge in Splatoon 3 is… impossible. 
I am 100% confident that no player in the world will ever legitimately do this. So let me know what you all think of this down below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with anything. And also please like and subscribe if you enjoyed. I'll see you all next time.